As you're watching this video, trillions of microscopic cities are working inside your body. Each one is perfectly organized with specialized workers doing specific jobs to keep you alive. Welcome to the amazing world of cells. Welcome to Seismic. I'm Matt, and today we're taking a tour inside cells to discover the incredible structures that make life possible. By the end of this video, you'll understand how cells are organized, what each organelle does, and how they all work together like parts of a well-designed machine. Get ready to shrink down and explore the building blocks of all life on Earth. Let's start our tour with an animal cell, the type of cell that makes up your body. Think of it like exploring a bustling city where every building has a specific purpose. First, we need to get through the cell membrane, the flexible boundary that surrounds every cell. It's like the city's border checkpoint, carefully controlling what gets in and what gets out. Water and small molecules can pass through easily, but larger substances need special permission. Once inside, you'll notice everything is suspended in cytoplasm, a jelly-like substance that's mostly water. Think of cytoplasm like the city's atmosphere, providing a medium where all the cellular activities happen. Now for the amazing part. Scattered throughout the cytoplasm are specialized structures called organelles. Each organelle is like a different type of building in our cell city, with a specific job that's essential for the cell's survival. Whether it's a muscle cell, a brain cell, or a skin cell, all animal cells have the same basic organelles. It's like how every city needs certain buildings, a power plant, a command center, a transportation system, but each city might look a little different. The largest and most important organelle is the nucleus, the cell's command center. Think of it kind of like its brain. Just like the city hall controls everything that happens in a city, the nucleus controls all cellular activities. Inside the nucleus, you'll find DNA, the genetic instructions that determine everything about the cell, and ultimately you. Your DNA contains the blueprints for every protein your cells need to make. The nucleus is surrounded by a double membrane called the nuclear envelope, which has tiny pores that act like security checkpoints. Only certain molecules with the right credentials can enter or leave the nucleus. When the cell needs to make a protein, the nucleus sends out molecular messengers called mRNA that carry the DNA's instructions to the protein-making factories elsewhere in the cell. Not all cells have a nucleus, like bacteria don't, but all plant and animal cells do, which is why we call them eukaryotic cells. The nucleus is so important that without it, complex life as we know it wouldn't exist. Next stop on our cell tour, the mitochondria. These oval-shaped organelles are often called the powerhouses of the cell. And for good reason. Mitochondria take in glucose, or sugar, and oxygen and convert them into ATP, the energy currency that powers all cellular activities. It's like having multiple power plants scattered throughout our cell city. Look at all those folded inner membranes called cristae. They create tons of surface area where energy production happens. It's brilliant engineering that maximizes energy output in a small teeny tiny space. Different cell types have different energy needs, so they have different numbers of mitochondria. Muscle cells, which need lots of energy for movement, are packed full with mitochondria. Brain cells also have many because thinking really requires energy. Here's a mind-blowing fact. Scientists think mitochondria were once free-living bacteria that got absorbed by ancient cells. They still have their own DNA separate from the nucleus. It's like our cells formed a permanent partnership with these energy specialists. Our cell city has many other important structures too. The endoplasmic reticulum, or ER, is like the cell's highway system, a network of membranes that transports materials throughout the cell. There are two main types, the rough ER, which is covered in ribosomes and makes proteins, and the smooth ER, which makes lipids and helps detoxify harmful substances. Speaking of ribosomes, these tiny structures are the cell's protein factories. They read the instructions from DNA and assemble amino acids into proteins. Some ribosomes float freely in the cytoplasm, while others attach to the rough ER. The Golgi apparatus is the cell's post office. It modifies, packages, and ships proteins to their final destinations. Proteins from the ER come here to get their final touches before being sent where they're needed. Lysosomes are the cell's cleanup crew. These small organelles contain powerful enzymes that break down waste materials, worn out organelles, and harmful substances that enter the cell. Finally, vacuoles are storage containers. In animal cells, they're small and temporary, but in plant cells, well, that's a different story. Plant cells have all the same organelles as animal cells, plus some special extras that make photosynthesis and plant life possible. First, plant cells have a cell wall made of cellulose, a tough 
tough, rigid structure that surrounds the cell membrane. Think of it like armor that protects the cell and helps plants stand upright without skeletons. The most important plant-specific organelle is the chloroplast, the site of photosynthesis. These green organelles contain chlorophyll, which captures light energy and converts carbon dioxide and water into glucose and oxygen. Inside chloroplast, you'll find stacks of membrane-bound structures called thylakoids, where the light capturing reactions happen. It's like having solar panels inside every plant cell. Plant cells also have a huge central vacuole that can take up 80% of the cell's volume. This giant storage container holds water, maintains cell pressure, and helps keep plants firm and upright. When the vacuole is full of water, it creates turgor pressure that keeps plants rigid. When plants don't get enough water, their vacuoles shrink and the plants wilt. Here's the amazing thing about cells. All these organelles don't work alone. They function together as an integrated system, like departments in a company working toward a common goal. For example, when the body needs a specific protein, the nucleus sends instructions to the ribosomes, which make the protein. The protein then travels to the Golgi apparatus for processing before being shipped to its final destination. Meanwhile, mitochondria are constantly producing ATP to power all of these processes. Without energy from mitochondria, none of the other organelles could do their jobs. Even waste management is a team effort. Lysosomes break down waste, the ER transports it, and vacuoles store it until it can be removed from the cell. And just like organelles work together in cells, cells work together in tissues. Tissues work together in organs, and organs work together to keep entire organisms, like you, alive and healthy. Let's review our cell city. The nucleus is city hall, controlling everything. Mitochondria are power plants providing energy in the form of ATP. The ER is the highway system, transporting materials. Ribosomes are factories making products. The Golgi is the post office, packaging and shipping. And lysosomes are the waste management system. Understanding cell structures and functions is the foundation of all biology and medicine. Maybe you'll become a cell biologist discovering new organelles, or a doctor using cellular knowledge to treat diseases. Don't forget to subscribe for more amazing science videos. And let me know down in the comments, which organelle do you think has the coolest job? Thanks for exploring the microscopic world of cells with Seismic. Want to explore more about cells, biology, and life science? Check out our complete middle school science curriculum at seismic.com, where every student can learn, grow, and achieve.